All right, so now we're gonna begin with a tracheostomy suction. We're gonna be suctioning this patient's tracheostomy tube. And um, many times these patients may not have a tracheostomy, but they have maybe an endotracheal tube. And you will be performing this in the same manner as you would in that situation as well. So for your, um, make sure that you're checking the patient. So I'm just gonna ask my patient here, Hi Tim, my name is Mary and I am a student nurse from CBTC Technical College and I'm gonna be suctioning out your trach today. So this patient is able to respond with um, a yes or no by nodding his head. So I am gonna go ahead and just um, ask him if he needs to be suctioned. He nods his head yes and I also have other signs that tell me that he needs to be suctioned and that would include I'm starting to hear more congestion, he's kind of trying to cough more and also um, his oxygen saturations are normally around 98% so I noticed he's starting to go down around 93% and with his oxygen on. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and suction him at this time. All right, okay, Tim, so we, we're gonna check your armband for your identity against your chart here. And we got your um, medical number, and we also have your name and date of birth on here. So if a patient can't really verbalize their name and date of birth, you can either, if, they're, if their medical record has a picture of them, you can verify it that way, um, or you can verify it with the, the medical record number on the arm, armband and on the chart. Okay, very good. I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started here. A um, Couple of other things that you need to be aware of before you suction is that um, we wanna make sure we give the patient enough oxygen before we start suctioning, since suctioning can almost be like you're holding your breath. So for him, he's at 93%. So I wanna just give him some little extra oxygen so that he has it on board before I start suctioning him. So that would require either, um, either I turn up his oxygen here to 15. Okay, so we're going ahead and we're hyper-oxygenating him and we're also watching his pulse oximetry. So typically um, this patient should have pulse oximetry on the monitor, they should also have a blood pressure cuff on and the ability to see their, um, their heart rate as well. Because sometimes suctioning can be very stressful on a patient uh, physiologically and that can also cause the blood pressure to go way up or it can cause the heart rate to go up and in some instances have an opposite effect of maybe causing the heart rate to drop too much. So you wanna make sure you monitor that continuously throughout the suctioning process. All right, so before we begin, I have hyperoxygenated him and I've also um, got his pulse oximetry on and his pulse oximetry is now saying he is at 99%. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands. And we do have a sterile package here. You'll see all different kinds of sterile um, suctioning kits for, for um, tracheal suctioning. Um, this is just a particular one that we have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this. Okay. So what you're gonna see is it's all kind of contained in that. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and open this. First we're gonna open from the top out. Okay. And before I would begin, I would also make sure I check my suction, to make sure it works, which I did do before um, I started the procedure. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. All right, so you're gonna find sterile gloves inside here and you're also gonna find a little container. You're gonna just kind of grab the end of that. Try not to get everything else on sterile, which sometimes is hard. So I know that I can touch this side of the glove because that's the outer or inside of it. So now I have my container here and I'm just going to go ahead and without touching the inside, I'm gonna open this up. Okay. All right. We're gonna put that right over here so it's close. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fill that up with normal saline. Again, making sure I check my expiration date on that. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set my suction to 80. All right. I'm just going to wash my hands quick here before I 
begin to put my sterile gloves on. All right, so we're gonna grab this one for my dominant hand. And sometimes the gloves aren't exactly um, where you like them to be when they're put in the package. So you might have to work around this a little bit. So just bear with me. Nothing's perfect. All right, now we'll grab the other one here. All right, so we just contaminated this glove. Um, so I'm gonna just, just continue, but let you know that you would start over again because this glove actually got contaminated on that side. So you would want to start over by getting another pair of sterile gloves. So it's always good to have another pair with you. All right. All right, so we have that. And then now we have our suction catheter, which this is really what you want to maintain um, sterility of, particularly what's going down in the patient's trachea. So kind of hold this in your hand like so. So you have just that outer edge sticking out. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I know that this hand here is going to be contaminated and this one's going to stay sterile throughout my procedure. Also note that you'd want to wear the proper PPE when you're doing suctioning, and that would include goggles and a mask and a gown because you may have splashes. All right, so here is my suction catheter, and I'm going to want to attach this to my, um, this is the suction to the wall, and I'm going to um, attach it to my tracheal suction. All right, so you know that this hand is contaminated, so that's only going to touch there. This one has to stay sterile okay so you want to keep that kind of wrapped up like that okay then I'm going to tell my patient I'm going to tell Tim that I'm going to start to begin suctioning so he has his oxygen mask on but I'm going to have to remove that while I'm suctioning and then I'm going to put it right back on when I'm done okay so again this this area here is considered contaminated all right and I'm just going to go ahead and when I put my finger or thumb over that area that means that I am on suction. So normally you would hear this sucking up the sterile saline, okay? All right, so now I'm ready to go down and suction out this patient's tracheostomy. So most importantly, do not put your finger over this, uh, this opening here while you're going down into the trachea. That means you're applying suction and you do not wanna apply suction when you're going down. You want to apply a suction when you're pulling that out. All right, Tim, so I'm going to go ahead and go down. You want to do this all in the process of about 10 seconds. Some literature says 15, but we're going to stick with 10 seconds because it's like holding your breath. All right, Tim, we're going to go ahead and go down. We're going to go down. When we sort of hear him start coughing and we maybe meet a little resistance, we're going to just pull up about a centimeter. Then we're going to apply suction. So you start suctioning, you can kind of do it intermittently with your finger. As you can see, I'm kind of going like this as I'm pulling it out and I'm kind of rotating. Awesome, good job, Tim. We've got a lot of that out. And I just want to clear my tubing real quick. And I'm gonna give him a little more oxygen in between. So you want to wait about two to three minutes in between before you go down again. You want that heart rate to, to recover and you want to make sure the oxygen saturation recovers. So I'm constantly keeping an eye on the oxygen saturation and I'm having the blood pressure cuff um, cycle um, frequently during the procedure to make sure the blood pressure is um, adequate. Now also I would stop at any time if the patient's blood pressure um, went very high or if the oxygen saturation start getting into um, hypoxic levels or even if the pulse rate starts to jump up. All right, so I'm gonna say two to three minutes have gone by. I'm just gonna check my suction here again. And all right, Tim, I'm gonna go down one more time, okay? I can hear you have just a few more um, crackles in there that I can hear, and I'm gonna go ahead and get those out. 
So I go down, go down, go down. All right, I hit a little bit of resistance. He's coughing, I'm gonna pull up a little bit. Now I'm gonna apply my suction. Good, real good. Good job, so get all that out. Excellent, so I'm gonna give you back your oxygen here. Let you recover a little bit. And now that I'm done, it's real simple. You detach the suction catheter from the wall suction. <clears throat> and then all you're gonna do is put this catheter right in your glove area there. Fold that over, fold that over, and then you can discard of that. And then we can also discard of my other equipment here. Try not to get that. All right. And then we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wash my hands. And also you wanna make sure you note that during the whole procedure, your patient's head of the bed should at least be semi-fowlers um, so that it's easier for the, the patient to breathe. And um, you also wanna give them that recovery time. So once his oxygen saturation has recovered back to um, his normal baseline, which is about 98%, which he is, then I can certainly go ahead and turn his oxygen back down to where it was prior to suctioning and turn my suction off. Because I only hyper oxygenated him throughout the procedure and before, so now that he's back to recovery, I'm gonna just put it back down to where he was, which, excuse me, he was right around four liters. All right, and then, um, I must add too that before you do suctioning, you need to do a full respiratory assessment. That means respiratory, um, auscultating the lungs and also making sure you check the respiratory, the respirations and his color and so forth and any cough. And then you also want to perform a respiratory assessment after you're done with the suctioning to see if it was effective or not. Okay, so now that he's all done, I got him back on his normal oxygenation. Um, all good, Tim, you feel better? He nods and says, yep, and um, his lung sounds hopefully sound better, and I can um, complete my procedure, making sure that his bed is locked and low, his call light is within his hand, so that he can uh, call me if he needs to, and also if he has any bed alarms, and to assist him with his bedside table here. And that's it for tracheostomy suctioning. I do just wanna mention one thing about oral suctioning. This here is called a um, Yonker, Yonker tube, which it, it looks, it's kind of a bend, bended um, firm plastic. And this is what we use to suction out the oral cavity of patients. So a lot of times they're gonna have oral secretions. And so a good time to do it is after you're done doing the trach suction, you could go ahead and suction out the oral cavity. Um, and any time is needed, you can do this. And this can be delegated to trained um, assistive personnel as well. But again, you would um, hook it up to, to wall suction or portable suction if you have it. And you would go ahead and you're able to, if you're able to have the patient open the mouth, you'd wanna go ahead and do the sides and then come in the front, go back in the sides, go on the top. Um, and if they tolerate, you try to get to the back of the throat without in, you know, making them gag. Um, so you gotta be careful, you don't wanna go back too far. But you get that all suctioned out so that they have a nice, nice cleaned out mouth. And a good idea would also be to perform oral hygiene as well after you're done with this. So this, these are good if they're not terribly soiled. Um, you would also use saline to clean this out and you can keep it for 24 hours as long as it doesn't you know, get real dirty and just label the time you opened it. And that way um, you can use it throughout a, throughout a 24 hour time period. All right, and that completes um, completes our tracheostomy suctioning.